Hey Radical Ones, John Altman here. It's time to talk about um, Fantastic Four films um, and my memories of them as I can think, think of right now. Um, one was they were some of the few, well, the first film was one of the few films that I really rallied for to try to get. A lot of times I just wait and see if something comes my way. I'm a terrible networker. I'm, well, I won't stalk anybody and try to get a job. So um, this is what I did because I really thought it'd be um, right up my alley. And so Ralph Winter, who was a producer on X-Men 2, I, um, I talked to profusely, profusely um, to get this, this project. And he brought a theme that I wrote um, just based upon the, uh, the script. Um, and the story to Tim Story, the director. And um, long story short, that's how I got hired. But it's also one of the few times where I just wrote a theme to a, a film I hadn't seen yet, um, just based on, on the idea. And, um, and I just thought this would be a great way for me to write themes that are sort of more, more wearing their motions on the sleeve and more um, uh, not trying to hide behind too much uh, psychological depth or anything like that, but really still just have motifs for the characters and so forth and have a lot of fun with it. Um, and then the, um, the second film, uh, Solo Surfer, was probably my, one of my favorite themes I've ever written, um, which is funny because I, I, a, I thought of it on a plane while I was uh, on my way to LA and then kept humming it to myself until I got home to, to record what I had um, uh, thought in my head. Um, but I presented that theme, uh, the mock-up of the theme to the head of music at Fox, and he was completely baffled by it, didn't understand it, and he thought we should do some jazzy sort of like, uh, you know, thing like, and this is literally what he sang to me, ba 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 And so, well, he's the head of music, so I went ahead and did that, um, did that version to present to the studio. So I presented to the studio, the executive in charge of the movie, and they were horrified, of course, and I had to fall on my sword because I couldn't tell them that I was made to do that. And I was just, I just, you know, professed that I was I lost. I'm sorry. I just, what was I thinking? And so sure, I'll, I'll go back and, and do something that's closer to what I do. Because they kept saying, we want what you, you know, not what you do. We, we want that John Altman thing, whatever that is. Like, okay. So I went back and I waited five days because I already written the theme and I presented it to them like, oh, this is exactly what we wanted, you know, like, duh. But so that's, it's funny how them, you know, in retrospect, um, the, the, that was just some of the short amount of drama that went on just before I even started the project. I guess the other drama in these movies was that they, uh, they got so hacked up in post-production. They got so, I, I was always said my scores is, is, were passed through a Cuisinart because everything was so chopped up so fast and, and all the breath was taken out of these films. Um, so, um, as we say, the films were frame fucked and back then, I guess that's still a term. Um, and so the, the, it's frustrating for me because the scores that had originally been written to the longer version of the movie, the movies were, um, very chopped up. So, um, uh, it's hard for me to watch those, but I guess if I try to just pretend that didn't happen, there's still a lot of fun to watch. Um, despite, uh, um, either they're, they're what's, I guess they're, they're, uh, a guilty pleasure, <laughs> to put it that way. So anyway, have fun talking about the Fantastic Four films, and um, I'll talk to you again. Bye.